welcome back to my channel. I want to talk about a few recent Love After Lockup updates in this video, starting off with Derek. So Monique posted on her hair Instagram page and her Facebook page, and she updated her profile picture and changed it to a mugshot of Derek. I'm not gonna lie, I was confused at first because when I was looking up trying to find these charges, it came up with this mugshot from an arrest from March of 2020 showing that he was in the Lorraine Correctional Institution and showed that he was currently incarcerated. So Monique actually responded to some people in her comments and she said for people that saying it's old, it's not. This is his mugshot from when he was, when we were together and my profile picture is recent. This is his arrest from March of 2020, what Monique shared, and you can see his mugshot. So I actually called up to the jail, and they did confirm that Derek is indeed currently behind bars. So they said the mugshot that Monique shared that we originally first saw, that was taken on January 17th. So that is a recent mugshot. I did ask about the confusion because I was like, okay, this mugshot is showing for arrest for March 2020, but you're saying that's a recent mugshot. And they explained that he had a probation violation and due to him having a probation violation, when they wrote down the admission date here, they're writing down the admission of when he was originally had the violation that put him on probation, if that makes sense. So he was arrested on January 17th for a probation violation by the Cuyahoga County Sheriff's Office. He stayed there for about 24 hours and then he was transferred to the county jail where he's currently being held without a bond whatsoever. And when Monique posted this, that was the first time that Derek's family had found out that he had even been arrested. So he had been in jail for almost 10 days at this point before his family even found out. And Derek's girlfriend, Angel, was just posting on Instagram recently that she's taking a break from social media. And now that explains it because she probably doesn't want to answer any questions or talk about what's going on with Derek. When I called up there, they were not able to give me any more information beyond that. I did put in a request to get more information, so hopefully I hear more within the next week as soon as more details are available. And I did ask Monique if she knew anything, and she said she has no idea. She just knows just as much as me that he's been arrested and it was for a probation violation. And she's assuming that it's probably because it's from a DV incident, which honestly wouldn't shock me because we've seen all the incidents that him and Monique had when they're together. Or either he got caught with drugs or he got in trouble with his probation for like leaving outside the state without getting permission. Now I want to talk about Quaylen because I got some tea on Quaylen. So some of you guys who've been following me for a while, you may remember about a year ago, I made a video with different updates on Love After Lockup cast members. And at the time, someone had sent me something about Quaylin, and they're like, look, I found this old Facebook page of Quaylin's. You need to take a look at it. So they sent me the link, I went and looked at it, and I came across a post from what sounded like a lover. And it's this dude and he was commenting on Quaylin's page and he's like, hey, I love you, I miss you, we have so many memories together, thank you for always being by my side, happy Valentine's Day, it's so hard not spending Valentine's Day without you. And I was like, okay, this sounds like a prison lover right here. I remember even some of his family members had seen that video and were in the comments just going off saying, oh, that's a lie. You don't know what you're talking about. And I could tell it's his family members because it started with a Q and the last name was Adams and all his brothers and sisters' names start with a Q. And come to find out that this is very much his prison lover like I was assuming. So I wish I still had the screenshot and I can't find the exact Facebook now because the message was from over a year ago. And unfortunately, I went back and deleted a lot of my videos when I got demonetized for a few months over the summer. But this guy slid in my Instagram DMs and confirmed that he was that guy 
that was making those messages and posts on Quaylen's Facebook. And he said, yes, we were lovers. He said, hey, my name is Aaron, and I want to expose Quaylen Adams that's on the show called Love After Lockup. He is gay, and I have receipts. So I was like, okay, I've heard something like this before. And I said, I remember a while back, someone sent me an old Facebook where it looked like he had a lover that was a dude. Spill the tea, I want to hear. And he says, yes, I was the guy. We were lovers in prison, and I was released then before he came home, and I ended up going to the feds. I have so many letters and pics he sent me. Quaylen is bisexual, and I wasn't the only guy he has had sexual relations with. I asked him, I said, well, did you come on to him first? Did Quaylen come on to you first? And he said, he came on to me first, but I have so many letters and pics from him. I'll dig them out tomorrow and send them to you. I tried to warn Chevelle who she was marrying. That was my first question, is does Chevelle know about this? But he did confirm that Chevelle is aware and he has spoken with her before. So he's supposed to send me everything he has tomorrow and I cannot wait. So stay tuned for that video coming in the next day or two because it sounds like he has a lot of tea he's about to spill. And now I want to share a short update on Dylan. So as you guys know, Dylan was arrested a few weeks ago and I got a notification on my phone a few days ago and that said that Dylan was released from custody on January 25th. So he's now a free man again. Hopefully he stays away from Marissa so he doesn't get sent back to jail because I'm sure the judge is getting tired of him. And now I want to talk about Chance and his girlfriend. A lot of people were dragging Taylor in the comments saying I can't believe Taylor would let Chance and this girl take baby Mason. I can't believe she's trying to play stepmom. But the first thing I noticed besides her being with baby Mason is all the picture frames in the background. And I commented and I said it looks like they're at Taylor's house. All her picture frames she has in the entryway of her home are in the background. And I don't blame her because I would not want Chance to leave with the baby right now with all the rest he's recently had. And Taylor actually liked that comment, so I'm pretty sure that's her just kind of nodding her head and confirming that that was her house. It's nice that they can all get along and Chance can come over and see his son. But I do kind of feel bad for Taylor that she has to deal with him, like, cuddling and laying all over each other on her couch while he's visiting baby Mason. I mean, it's eventually going to happen, but it just seems like it's still so soon after they just literally finally split up only, like, what, three months ago? And now I want to talk about Letitia. It seems like we have nonstop updates on Letitia because this girl cannot stop scamming people. So someone actually reached out to Colleen, which is the girl that Letitia screwed over for $10,000. She paid Letitia ten k to do the books on her business. Letitia didn't do diddly squat and just completely screwed her over. So Colleen has been posting a lot of different things, calling out Letitia and showing all her receipts on Facebook and using the hashtag Boss Tax and Accounting and Letitia Griffin and Letitia Collier. She's using her married name and even her maiden name. So when people look her or her business up, that's going to come up. And this girl came across her because of that. And she says, hi, I'm contacting you because Letitia Collier has also ran off with my money after paying for a tax class with her. I would also like your lawyer's information. I'm also curious why you don't do a small claim why you didn't do small claims court. Colleen is in the process of going through the small claims court process and filing a lawsuit so she can try to get some money out of Letitia. But she doesn't even care so much about the money. She just wants Letitia to be held accountable for what she did. The past few weeks, Letitia has been promoting that she's doing these tax classes. And this girl was like, okay, I want to take a class. 
So she slid in Letitia's DMs, and Letitia was like, okay, I got you. You got to send me $600 first. So she sent Letitia $600 for the class, and then Letitia just ghosted her. Is not responding to her now, has not returned her money, and now she plans to handle it through the courts. So as I reported in my last video about Letitia, Letitia is currently filming for Love After Lockup because she claims that Keith is supposed to get out in the next few weeks. But when I looked it up, it shows his release date is February of 2025. So is this another scam by Letitia? Is she trying to run game on Love After Lockup? I don't think they would be dumb enough to fall for that. Maybe he got put up for parole a year early. I have no idea. But now I want to talk about Jessica. So she was on Love During Lockup and she dated Dustin. And she's been single since everything went south with her and Dustin. But recently, she finally posted her new boo. So it kind of appears that this man has been locked up in prison before just by some of the pictures she posted. But he's currently a free man. And she says she's super happy. And some people did message me pointing out that he has some tattoos that may seem concerning. I can't tell because I don't really know too much about what tattoos mean what but do you guys notice anything in the pictures that seem suspicious and let me know in the comments below last but not least I want to talk about Deontay so this is uh, kind of old this happened after last week's episode after Blaine threw the pot of bacon grease and went crazy and then went inside Miley Grace's room and was complaining about her mother and saying all kinds of things that a 13 year old doesn't need to hear having an adult conversation with a teenager and Deontay posted he says I haven't had the chance to watch that many episodes but he said but if I'm being honest about the scenes with my ex in them after seeing them and seeing the reactions of people from it I'm just going to say that's kind of crazy seeing people defend so hard certain actions from that guy and excusing it. Because I guarantee you if it had been me in that situation and I would have been the one to go and confide and vent to someone's 13 year old daughter and in my boxers on top of that. Oh, it would have been an extremely different sentiment. I would have been called all kinds of creeps and disrespectful and everything you can imagine under the sun. But somehow this guy gets sympathy and a pass and everything gets put on lens. Not that she doesn't deserve because she's nowhere near an angel and is very manipulative mother effer. I know that firsthand from experience and I could never defend her anymore. But if that's not a double standard like a mother effer, I don't know what is. It ain't really none of my business no more, but half the fan base would have crucified me for something like that. But old Ernest goes to camp. Gets a free pass. Oh no he didn't say Ernest goes to camp. I mean he ain't wrong. He kind of looks like Ernest though. But really honestly I feel like Deontay's speaking facts. Because certain people if they would have been in that situation. If there was Deontay. If there was Chance. We would have never heard the end of it. But it seems like some people are more forgiving with other people. But I did see a lot of people grilling him. I saw more people saying negative things about that situation than positive. Deontay went live talking more about it yesterday. Saying he didn't feel like it was fair. And he also said that Lindsay, according to him, is the cast snitch. And he feels like that's one of the reasons why producers like her so much. So he said, I know for a fact that he said when he was with Lindsay, Lindsay, she would go and look at other cast members' social medias. And like Monique and Derek, like when they're dropping spoilers on each other and having social media drama. She was allegedly screenshotting that stuff. And sending it to producers and running to producers and snitching on every single cast member. According to Deontay, he pretty much said that she's like the producer's pet. And the cast snitch. And uh, she said a lot of the people she'd be telling on, they don't even have any idea that she'd be ratting on them all the time. That honestly doesn't surprise me. Because Deontay used to always say that she hates other cast members and their success like she hated how popular Derek and Monique got so that makes sense why she was constantly trying to snitch on them and get them kicked off the show because she wants to be the main event 
I really hope this is the last we're seeing of her because since she's been with Scott, her storyline has just been boring to me. But that's it for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think about everything in the comments below. Check out my lashes and cosmetics at coinamber.com. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.